he uh, negotiated my release. And he negotiated the release. Yes. Wasn't yeah. much negotiation. It was. <laughs> it was kind of odd. No one really knows how I got out. Well, maybe we can reveal that Let's once, find once out. we go live. We're ready to let these gems be dropped. <laughs> <laughs> um, It'll be in the book. Can we do one where um, one picture for our social media to? Yeah, let's go. We can all talk in here. Okay. Whatever, Kalia, K A L E A. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gotta keep it smiley. Oh yeah. So smiley. Will you send me those two, Amy? Mm -hmm. All right. Mary Jane, good afternoon, and welcome once again to About That Time. I'm your host, Noah Rubin, and we are very excited. Uh, it's going to be an exciting afternoon. We have an extremely special guest in the building today, uh, Mr. Weldon Angelos. He has an incredible story to tell. Uh, if you guys care about cannabis, you know that cannabis has been getting cracked down on by the feds by the local authorities for a long time. They've been handing out sentences that are absolutely out of control. Now, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Angelos, you were sentenced to 55 years for selling $850, $950 worth About of cannabis? About $950,000, wow. roughly. Not $950. It was actually 55 years in one day. 55 years and one day, That's guys. This petty. is absolutely wow. ridiculous. Well, then thank you so much for coming through, <laughs> Thanks sir. Thanks for having it's me. Absolutely, it. absolutely a pleasure. Um, now, tell us a little bit more about your journey. Uh, because I know that there's a lot of exciting things on the horizon, but there's a lot of pain that's led to this moment right here for there you to be able to be pain. sitting next to us telling this story. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, so, you know, in the 90s, I'd say the mid 90s, I started working on a career in the music industry. Um, I was working with folks like Snoop Dogg, Tupac Shakur's recording group and many others. Um, and, you know, I was living in Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm. So I, you know, I had the crosshairs on me. Not a lot of big acts out there. And I was bringing, you know, big people out to Salt Lake City. I was working in L.A. a lot, but, you know, I was bringing people to Utah. So, you know, the local authorities caught wind of us. And, you know, marijuana, cannabis is the culture. You know, we were smoking it, selling it, not in, nothing major, just little bits. We were making videos. We made a, a song with Snoop Dogg and did a video for a, a song called A Little More Dope to Smoke. Mm. And somehow the feds got a hold of that footage um, and they started an investigation. They sent an informant after me um, and he purchased like, about, I think it was like 900 or $950 worth of weed. Um, so it was like three, three transactions for 300 and something dollars each. Um, and that was it. They couldn't get anything else. Um, the federal government got a hold of this case mm. and they turned those three cells into a 20 count federal indictment where I was facing 105 years of mandatory prison time. Wow. wow. And that just oh, took dude. me out of my career and everything. I had a major deal on the table. I just signed, you know, Badass and Napoleon from the Outlaws and had a singer, Dante Thomas, and did a docu uh, documentary with uh, Snoop and all the LBC crew in it. Um, and they, this, you know, this case just kind of just took me out of that and ruined my career, ruined my life. Um, and I went to trial and, you know, I won some counts, lost some counts, and I was faced with a mandatory minimum of 55 years. Judge had no choice uh, but to impose it. And thankfully, the judge was actually sympathetic. And he, you know, he went down kicking and screaming. He couldn't do anything, but he wrote a lengthy opinion um, decrying the sentence. And he called on the president to commute the sentence to, uh, you know, something more just. Oh, my goodness. So, I mean, there's a there's a point where a judge's hands are literally tied. Absolutely. My God. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, what's really interesting about your story is obviously you've been able to bring together so many different kinds of people to bring awareness to this issue. Is that something that out of the gate you knew you were going to be able to do? Was that like the game plan? Um, well, it kind of happened when we were fighting for my release. My judge was, uh, you know, super conservative. So conservatives who are usually against criminal justice reform, they want the longest sentence possible. Um, they looked at this like, hmm, maybe there is something wrong. So my judge's, you know, opinion opened the eyes of conservatives, and one of them being Senator Mike Lee, who was actually a prosecutor in the office that prosecuted me. When he was elected to the Senate, you know, he decided to, he wanted to do something about it. So, you know, my case also attracted a billionaire businessman, Charles Koch. 
And so, you know, I, I have all these like celebrities like, you know, um, uh, Bonnie Rayet, uh, Mike Epps, mm -hmm. uh, even Alicia Keys was supporting my release. And then we have these ultra conservatives who came together in like this coalition, this unlikely allies coalition. So when I got out, I knew that I was going to bring these people together to do something amazing. Now, have you gotten any flack either from the more conservative folks who supported you or from the more progressive folks for, who supported you for bringing this coalition together? I mean, they. I think the only, uh, you know, time I had gotten some of that was when I went to the White House um, to partake in uh, President Trump's criminal justice reform summit. Um, I've been invited to the White House four or five times, um, and we've got some stuff done. We Van Jones, I worked with Van Jones, the Koch brothers, and President Trump, and we actually got a, a major reform package passed called the First Step Act. First federal reform since 1970. Um, it, re it reformed four uh, mandatory minimums. It got rid of three strikes for drug, for drug offenses. Um, it did a lot, but it was just a first step. And one thing that it didn't do, which it didn't affect anyone in prison for cannabis. And so once we passed that, you know, the joy was short lived. Um, and that's when I looked to my partner, Hollis, who is, you know, I've been working with since the 90s on music. Um, I said, we need to do something for cannabis offenders. So we decided to launch a nonprofit and our first initiative uh, being Mission Green, which will focus exclusively on those serving time for cannabis offenses. Amazing. That's really amazing. So just so people out there uh, know the full story. So you were sentenced, you went to prison. How much of your that sentence did you serve? 13 years wow. in uh, U U.S. Penitentiary Lompoc. What was that like? It was crazy. I mean, it was, I, I was in there for some weed, and I was in there with killers and mm -hmm. murders and rapists, and I'm seeing them coming in and leaving, and I'm still in there for some weed. Jesus. When you told people in prison your story, what did they say? They want to see my paperwork because they're they like, there's no it. way you got 55 years for weed. So they're like, let me see your paperwork, man. You must have killed somebody. You got some bodies in your background or something. I'm like, no, nah, man, that's for some weed. They're like, no, nah, you, you got something in your past then. And I showed them paperwork, and they just couldn't believe it. Wow. Insane. Truly insane. Truly insane. Now, what do you think people what what do you think people need to do? If people care about this issue, if people want to help support the cause, what are the things that we as just folks out here can do to help change this? I mean, one thing you can do is vote for candidates who are, you know, pro criminal justice reform, pro legalization. I mean that's that's a first step is make sure you go out and vote for the right candidates. Okay. Excellent. Um, and you have also been working uh, on a documentary sort of about your story. I have. What's that process been like? Well, it's been amazing. We've been shooting it since I got out. Like the, the first month I was out, we hit the ground running and we started shooting. Yeah. Um, just interviewing people and just kind of telling my story and following me around as I'm, you know, advocating. We went to the White House and we just went and met with various celebrities, did South by Southwest with Snoop Dogg, where I brought Snoop Dogg and the Koch brothers together for a, a panel on criminal justice reform. We've been capturing that. And just trying to, you know, uh, raise awareness and try to get more people involved. Now, I remember when that panel happened, people were very confused about the fact that Snoop was going to share a st stage with the Koch brothers. Can you help folks out there understand why s folks like the Koch brothers, who we think of as conservatives or against progressive causes that we all hold dear, why are they advocating for this criminal justice reform issue. So Charles Koch has always been on this. Well, not always, but he has for like the last 15, 16, 17 years silently. Um, they don't advertise it, but they've been supporting reform, uh, donating to the um, you know, uh, federal defenders. Um, they've been doing a lot of work on the side. And actually, Charles Koch is actually a libertarian. So he's not a, he's not a Republican. He's a libertarian. So they have pro economic policies that a lot of progressives don't like, such in environmental issues. But on criminal justice reform, they're spot on. Like they support you know everything we're doing, um, and I consider them a partner in in our movement. Um, so that's you know we we see eye to eye on that. You know we might disagree on all these other issues, but on this we see eye to eye. So why not work together and get something done? Hallelujah. Now. Did you were you there when the Koch brothers met Snoop Dogg? Yeah, I organized it, so I brought them together, um, and yeah, I was right there. We captured it from a documentary, so that must have been kind of a milestone moment, right yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. Bringing yeah. a lot of different kinds of folks together, and that's what we're doing. You know, our, our title, our working title is "Unlikely Allies," because hmm. you know my story is able to bring people who you, who would never sit in the same room together, but they are for this mission, and they did to help get me out. And you know, we're continuing that with the Mission Green Initiative. Absolutely. Um, now tell us a little bit more about the Mission Green Initiative. 
So the Mission Green Initiative is um, something that we are launching to secure the release of people serving time for cannabis-related offenses. We feel like they're the most deserving group, and they've been left out of every reform that's come out, even though there haven't been a lot of reforms. But, you know, they're sitting in prison while these companies are making millions and billions for doing the exact same thing. They're considered entrepreneurs, but we're leaving these people rotten in prison for decades for the exact same thing, and it's bullshit. Yeah, it is really bullshit. Um. Can you talk a little bit about your family? Because, you know, you were sentenced, you have a family. Were there moments where you felt kind of hopeless in prison? Oh, yeah. I, I contemplated killing myself. Like, I was really that, like, I'm not doing 55 years. I said, if I'd rather be dead. Um, but, you know, looking at my, talking to my sons, and I really got to see my kids because mm -hmm. um, they moved me out of state. Um, but... You know, I mean, that was the hardest part, seeing my kids grow up and hearing them struggle. I'm talking on the phone saying, you know, we don't have anything like we're broke and I couldn't do anything about it. Wow. That's really tough. Now, my question, uh, of course, definitely um, feelings of hopelessness and probably just worst pain that I could ever imagine emotionally, mentally. Did you go into this knowing because I know you were saying you went into this and the judge was fighting for you. Did you know or did you at least feel like? This fifty-five years isn't gonna happen. Like I'm, I'm. They're fighting for me. Yeah, like, I had hope because my judge was so. He's such a respected jurist. Um, you know, he's a conservative. He's actually like really. T he was a tough on crime judge. Right. He was against Miranda rights. Um, he was against the exclusionary rule, which says if a, a police, um, you know, violate the Fourth Amendment, you get to suppress evidence. He was against all that. So he, we thought he was just going to give me the maximum he could give me. But so it was a surprise. And so hearing him say that gave me hope. Yeah. He called on the president, he called on Congress to fix the law. Yeah. Now, it took until I got out for Congress to actually fix that law because Senator Mike Lee and Cory Booker were using my case mm -hmm. to pass this First Step Act. Mm -hmm. So my case was sort of like, you know, the um, motivating factor. And, and, it, and my story changed the hearts and minds of members of Congress who would never have voted for criminal justice reform. Um, so, so yeah, so I had hope and then I had more hope when people like Senator Mike Lee, Cory Booker, Rand Paul were s using my case uh, on the Senate floor and they wrote Obama a letter and, they, you know, asking Obama to release me immediately. That's when I started feeling like, okay, you know, I'm going to come home. Right. But there right. were times when I lost all my appeals and I was just forgotten and yeah, I'm like, yeah. man, I'm not getting out of here. Jeez. Crazy. And it's for some bullshit weed. And then mm -hmm. you, in 2012, I'm like, I just filed my clemency petition. And then you start seeing states start legalizing it recreationally. And it's like, damn, I'm in here for some bullshit. Yeah, it's like, what's what? I guess it's like, what is the climate like inside a place like that when you know for a fact? Like, especially because you're, you're in there at the height of this. Wait, what do you mean? This is legal now? Like, is that kind of the genu like, genuine? Yeah, and even worse than that, I was, right before I got out, I was in there with a guy that I was probably served maybe five years with. He was operating a legal medical cannabis dispensary in Modesto. Mm -hmm. He got 22 years for following state law. He's still in there right now. I got his co-defendant out under President Obama's clemency initiative. Mm -hmm. I filed a petition for both of them, but Obama only granted one and left the other one in there for no with no explanation. Mm -hmm. So that's even, I think his case is even worse than mine because he was following state law. And he's still in there, and people right now, you can walk it. Do, they're following exactly like in Modesto. Got, they replaced him. So it's like he's still considered a criminal, but people who are doing the same thing are entrepreneurs. So, right, right. you know, it's a hypocrisy the government needs to fix without delay. Wonderful. I totally agree. I don't want to keep you out of the cipher. Do you want to? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to make sure that, you know, you were well, you knew you were welcome. Uh, we actually have a comment from the audience. They want to check in with us. We like to check in with our audience. Uh, Vincente Wilson, get all of our POWs, prisoners of war, of the war on drugs, out now. I, I mean, I think that's a sentiment we all yeah, agree with. Definitely. Uh, we got to get folks out uh, because it really is a bunch of people who are victim of really ridiculous laws. Yeah, we call them victims because they're victims. And we, I, I want the, the White House, I want members of Congress to have that sense of urgency. We can't leave them in there any longer. Like, it's time to let them out. And we can start with the most egregious cases and work our way down. But something has to be done right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's uh, completely on point, guys. Uh, so if you're checking in with us right now, uh, guys, we're, this is about that time. Uh, Mary Jane, uh, I'm Noah Rubin, your host. We want to check in with our sponsors. Uh, Loon, they make wonderful pre-rolls. They make wonderful disposable vape pens. You should check out their products. Uh, they're on ease right now. We also have a new sponsor that we are adding. Uh, our good fine friends at G-Pen. This is their cookies collab. Uh, they make great products. You should check them out at your local dispensary, at your local smoke shop. 
Uh, they make all great products and they make this show possible. Um, now, Weldon, we like to do a segment on About That Time. We call it Post It Up. We take some pictures from your social media. You tell us the story behind them. Uh, this first one is with a friend of ours, with a friend of yours. Uh, when was this picture taken? Oh, what was cool. going on here? That picture um, was taken in Snoop's house. I think it was yeah in Claremont, California when he had that mansion out there. Um, we had recorded a song called We From The LBC, um, which ended up became in the concept of an entire album that I was working on. I was doing songs with everybody from Long Beach, you know, Badass, Eastsider, Snoop, Daz, um, and I was really close with Daz for a number of years in the 90s, and so when we did the album We From The LBC, we decided, you know, that should be the concept of the entire album. Everyone on there is from Long Beach. So mm -hmm. that was, I think, 2001 or like late 2000, early 2001. Totally. Tell us a little bit more about how you got into producing records. Man, my family on my mother's side in uh, Nashville, they were, uh, you know, backup uh, Music musicians singing. for jazz and country singers. And mm -hmm. I thought it wasn't my genre, but they were very, extremely talented. They just didn't have the business sense. So, you know, and I was able to meet a lot of people and, and watch them, you know, create companies and, and, and produce stuff. And I learned a lot from Daz, Snoop Dogg's cousin, um, on the business side. You know, he was you know, showing me how to create an independent record label. You know, he was walking me through the steps and everything. So everything just sort of fell in. I befriended a number of people like Napoleon from the Outlaws. Um, he became one of my best friends and mentors and um, just sort of picked up from there and everything sort of took off and then crashed. <laughs> mm. It's a roller coaster, man. But let's hope that this documentary is something that, you know, brings you back into the, uh, into the light and helps change the world, you know? That yeah. would be a really nice thing. Um, speaking of getting the word out there, this next picture, I think, is a pretty good testament to the fact that you guys are projecting a pretty big message out here. Yeah, we're serious. How, we're, do, how does it feel to see yourself on a billboard? It was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing, actually. So, you know, our message is getting across, and this is just the beginning. So we plan on going full force. Absolutely. So uh, with Mission Green, uh, you know, you have the documentary going on. What other types of initiatives are you guys focused on? Um, we're hoping to do a series that, you know, sort of picks up from everything I've been doing since I've been out and sort of, you know, the Mission Green initiative. That'll be one of them um, because, you know, we feel, um, you know, the, the, the bigger reach, the more people we can reach, the more hearts and minds we change and, you know, the l more likely we're going to get the reforms that we need. Yeah, 100 percent. And, you know, sometimes you just got to let people know on a billboard. Yeah, yeah, that's one way to do it. Yeah, it's big like <laughs> that. Now, speaking of changing people people's minds, this next picture uh, is kind of in front of a wall, I think, of a lot of things that people were trying to uh, confuse people about. What's going on in this flick? Yeah, it was. Um, that's an exhibit at the uh, Weed Maps Museum of Weed. And it looks like this is a bunch of like kind of old propaganda. Yeah, like that's what. It, yeah, like, they're showing the old, you know, reefer madness propaganda. Totally. Now, coming up in uh, being based in Salt Lake City, I'm guessing you know obviously folks who live in California, it's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. What what were the perception of people around you like? Get being into weed, being into the music that you were in Salt Lake. Tell us a little bit about that well, dichotomy. Salt Lake's okay. You everyone when they say Salt Lake, they think of Utah. Utah's right. different. Okay, Utah is like really conservative, really Mormon. Salt Lake City itself is extremely liberal. So it's like you got one spot in, in, in whole entire Utah that's actually really liberal. It's right. like the like Austin we had, of Utah. We had a, yeah, we had a full <laughs> gay, like, a, you know, you had a gay mayor, you had a, 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 a liberal mayor protesting Bush every time he came to Utah. So Salt Lake City itself is really liberal and it's, you know, it's different. But when you start going in the outskirts is when you get really conservative. That's how I got convicted. Like I interviewed my jurors after and they were extremely Mormon, ex had no contact with the system or even the city. Um, so, you know, that's mm -hmm. the difference. And, um, you know, the people who were investigating me were from, you know, the, the other side. So um, that's and sort of how. Salt like hoops. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, it's uh, yeah, and it's just a little different there. But, you know, I was going back and forth. So I've lived in Tennessee, too, my um, mother's side of the family. My mother lives in California or out here, but um, her side of the family are from Nashville. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Um, well, obviously, you've been connecting with a lot of really cool folks uh, on this mission. This next flick uh, is also with someone who we hold close to our yes. hearts. Tell us a little bit about what's going on in here. Oh, Ice Cube. I love Ice Cube, man. Um, he's one of my favorite uh, entertainers. Um, so I was at, uh, I was invited to one of his games, uh, the Big Three, 
Yeah. Was, yeah, so that Pretty was backstage, fresh. yeah. Totally. The Big Three has really been uh, doing big things. And, and a lot of folks who are involved with Big Three in one way or another have been pretty supportive of your cause. Am I right? Yeah, and, my, and shout out to Tattoo the One. Um, he's, you know, he's a part of uh, Big Three Radio, and he does a lot more for Big Three. And um, he's a part of this, too, as well. Okay. Well, shout out Big Three. And Tattoo uh, the One. And Tattoo the One. <laughs> you know, shout out to tattoo the One. And shout the crew. out to the Three. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, that's how you got to do it. All right, we have one more. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the panel at South by Southwest with Snoop and the Koch brothers. I think this next one is also another panel discussion uh, mm-hmm. that you're on. Uh, what's going on in this flick? Um, that was a panel I set on in Vegas at the Emerge Festival. Okay. And they featured me there to talk about, you know, criminal justice reform and what I'm doing and the documentary. Yeah. Now, yeah. has speaking publicly about this um, come to you pretty naturally? Um, no. I mean, I hated public speaking, but it, I've done it so much. I'm always mic'd up. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and always going on the news and different places. So now it's just, I, it's, I just memorized everything. So it's pretty easy. Okay. It took, it took some time, but it now you're in It definitely took rhythm. some time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we got another check-in from the audience. Um, Esteban Cruz, uh, keep ki- fighting for us, man. I support your cause 100. Esteban Cruz, thanks awesome. for checking in. Yeah. yeah. Guys, everyone out there. Support the cause. Mm-hmm. Educate yourselves. Uh, find out about uh, Mission Green. Uh, Mary Jane has produced a series as well called Prisoners of Prohibition. This is a big issue, guys. Uh, we're going to become uh, come to voting season very soon. Yeah. Uh, make sure you do your homework. Make sure you know where people stand on this issue. Make sure you know where people have been standing on this issue because cannabis has created a lot of followers and a lot of people that are playing as though they're supporters of this issue, but they haven't really been repping uh, for a very long time, so it's right. important they rep now. But you know, there's also I think a lot of snakes out there. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people running for Congress or current members of Congress say you know they'll support Canada when they get in office. They don't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's been so much talk. There's a lot of talk, guys. Make sure that there's walk if there's going to be talk. Yeah. Right. It's hard. It's hard to discern sometimes. The but great, we gotta try. Uh, <laughs> the great theologian Quavo said uh walk it like i talk it i believe i think so that's that's the that's, that's uh that's a well, I got. quote right there uh no uh well then we also have some friends that we like to hang with here on about that time they're the critter click we got our lion here clarence you know clarence the lion <laughs> mm-hmm. he comes and hangs out What's with up, us clarence yeah he, it's you know, been he, a while he changed when the the live action lion king came out he hasn't he been back since a little yeah you know he's he's smoker friendly for sure okay. you know that, i mean he wouldn't be that chill yeah, his he mouth like he the blunt. <laughs> ah, he wants to hit blunt. that yeah it's true actually let's let's see i mean is i don't know if this is legal guys the PETA people might get mm-hmm. mad at us can we get? And can we get? Clarence, you with it? Clarence, you, you want to hit that? Just hit there it. goes. Oh! Oh, he, wants, he wants that. Blunt. Oh, he got he, it. He wants that blunt. There he goes. There he goes. Clarence, <laughs> he's smoking that gas. You know, it doesn't take much to uh, to amuse me, Weldon. So yeah, it's true. I'm good for the rest. Clarence of the day. comes through. He makes us laugh. Uh, Mary Jane, thank you guys for checking in with us. This is about that time. I'm your host, Noah Rubin. We're hanging with Weldon Angelos, learning all about the Mission Green movement, Yes. learning about prison reform, criminal justice reform, why you guys need to be voting uh, when the time is right for a candidate that supports changing the political system, getting prisoners out, saving taxpayers money, and ultimately making our system a more equitable one for everyone. Now, are you interested in any kind of cannabis businesses now as well? Yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to be in the be industry a few. because, you know, the music career is over with. You know, the ship sailed on that, but I definitely want to be eventually in the industry. Mm-hmm. Totally. So, well, it's there's a lot of opportunity out there, and, yeah. you know, there are programs being set up to help folks who've been victims of these kinds of arcane laws. Um, so, you know, let's uh, shout out all our future entrepreneurs that are going to be getting out and making great products for us to consume. Um, now. Well, then we like to do a segment we call Roll the News. We take some headlines from around the world. We talk about it. We want to make sure everyone is up with the latest news. Uh, Our first story uh, is not about cannabis. Uh, It is about robots. Uh, Boston Dynamics. Now, these guys make robots. You've seen a lot of viral videos with, like, their dog and stuff like that. Uh, Their first product, Spot is actually going to be released into the market. Now, we've been watching these videos. Have you guys seen these videos of, like, the dog, the robot dog that, like, walks around and, like falls down on ice and stuff like that. These videos get millions of views. 
But now their first consumer product that's actually going to be starting to be released into the marketplace is available. Do you guys think robots are going to take over the world and destroy us? Uh, I'm not with it. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I uh, I don't. Uh, I like my dog uh, with fur and uh, drool. You know the occasional accident on the carpet. I don't want my dog to hold me at gunpoint one day. You never know. <laughs> did you guys see the Black Mirror episode with the like drone dogs? I did. That was scary. That. It was scary. <laughs> I gotta just, say that was I mean, hell, that was serious. I mean, Robocop? I see that picture and I I'm like I'm kind of like ah. Eh, I mean, yeah, it looks <laughs> yeah, cool and like looks, yellow and it's like just, carrying some stuff for you, but like you could easily weaponize that thing. Like I am not good like with a torch lighter. <laughs> Keep that far away from me. Like, uh, uh-uh. yeah. No way. How do you pet? Know. Well, how do you pet him? Doesn't look very snug. There, is there a pet button? I'm not with this. What do you think, Weldon? No, I'm not with it. Thumb, <laughs> thumbs down on the robot thumbs dogs. Down. Sorry, guys. I mean, it just seems like mankind just has a bad track record when it comes to like, oh, we won't weaponize it. Like, right. I'm sorry, but that's just isn't how things have gone historically. Yeah, no. So. We got to be real careful with. They this killed one. Bumblebee. They killed Bumblebee. Just, you know what I mean? That's please. hurtful. That's we're hurtful done. right we're there. Done. All right, we have a cannabis-related headline next, guys. Uh, New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey governors plan to meet to discuss marijuana legalization. Now, this has been a story we've been yeah. following for a while. New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. None of them have quite got their act together when it comes to legalizing cannabis for adult use. California, we got it together. A few other states got it together. It seemed like New Jersey was going to win. New York hates being beaten by New Jersey. It seemed like they were going to get there first. Now they're saying we all need to talk about it. What do you think about the East Coast getting with the legal cannabis movement? Man, they need to get their act together. Absolutely. <laughs> For real. Absolutely. Now, my, my, my father, uh, he lives in Massachusetts. They've given out only like three or four dispensary licenses, and the result is there's 200 people lined up in like the one dispensary every single day right. on a busy road. So it's like you got my dad's 81. You got like everyone who goes in the medical line. Everyone's waiting outside all the time. It seems yeah. like it seems like real chaos. West Coast seems to get it together. Even Utah has uh, a medical yeah, cannabis help, program I now. Help advocate for that, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a special thing. I feel like. Yeah, they actually was going to have a um, government-run uh, dispensary, but it was like the oh, state no. would be, be criminalized. Yeah, so they actually said, Meh, maybe not. Well, so they open the door for more dispensaries. But, they, you know, I mean, that's a huge step for Utah. Yeah, I mean, so, it's, see, know, when I read that headline, I was definitely like, that yeah. seems pretty major. Yeah. But, the you know, the church actually kind of got involved and ended up kind of advocating for that, right? No, they fought it. And so they had no choice but to concede. So that's why they, they came to the table to negotiate. And, and it's first of all, a church should not be involved with that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that was crazy to have a church involved like that, you know. Um so, but I mean, we got, you know, an all right bill. I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's not the best. We have to have it in blister packs. Right. In bl- blister pack gram nugs or whatever. Right. And you got to vape it. Like, you can't burn it. So, it's okay. it's weird. But well, it, it, it's we inter- got something. It's so. interesting you mentioned that because one of the things that New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut are discussing is making sure their laws are synced up because... When Cuomo passed the medical bill in New York, right. he said yes to the medical bill, but no smoking allowed. You couldn't get anything that was intended to be smoked, which seems like many people prefer, that's their preferred ingestion method. Absolutely. Um, so the reason they're syncing up is because if New Jersey says, it's okay, we're gonna sell smokables, but New York doesn't, the path train is gonna get real lit real quick. Uh, it's gonna be a really uh, great time to commute from New York to New Jersey, get your smoke bowls and come back. Listen. So no flour, is that what he wanted? Ultimately, yeah, ultimately, yeah. So if they sync up and they come to terms and they realize that the vast majority of people are gonna wanna have access to something smokable. Uh, well, the reason why you need sense. flour is because when you legalize flour, you stop the um, harassment of police that pull you over and say, oh, I smell marijuana in your car, I need to search it. You know, if it's legal, they can't do that. But yeah. if the flower is illegal, they still have an excuse to pull you over and shake you down. Right. And that leads to all kinds of other problems. Yeah, Absolutely. and they, 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 they do that. I've been pulled over plenty of times. I smell weed, get out of the car. They're looking for a gun or something else. They say that all the time. So yeah. if you legalize it, you get rid of that. So I think that's you know, one of the important reasons why you need to legalize flour. <laughs> flour is essential, guys. Yes. I mean, it's flour like, power. It's, it's, listen, we're Americans. We're about tradition here. This is tradition. 
Get the vapes out of here. Yeah. Our founding fathers, you think they had vapes? No, 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 no. No, oh, they were they were growing hemp and smoking it. You damn right. Chilling out, enjoying uh, writing the Constitution <laughs> on it, right? Yeah, you know they ripped off a bottom yeah, of the did. Constitution. They were like, all right, now. Yep. Let's make sure. I mean, like we often do here on the show, you know, like we're running out of rolling papers. We have no idea what's going on. Right. You know, you sometimes you got to rip the Constitution <laughs> just to roll one up. That's, it. That's, that's reasonable. Totally reasonable. I think we have another uh, check in from the audience. Uh, Easy Android. Am I the only one that is staring at the woman smoking? And she ain't Easy sharing. Easy oh. Android. Let me tell you what's Kalia. happening. You're, hold on. Let me let me address that. Uh, your uh, Android phone. <laughs> uh, must have lost service because we've been going back and forth my friend so uh, I'm going to need you to force close your app you may have to restart your device take the battery out I know there's a battery in your phone go ahead and take the battery out put that back in restart the phone easy android and then you're with us live on about that time there Is you it a go and call cus Sprint customer service while you're at it you know well, that, that was your <laughs> phone. That wasn't me. <laughs> That's pretty good. Was like, yeah, well, thank you. It was a thank really you. good freeze frame, guys. That was a very expertly uh, generated. That's okay, really we have, good. We have, one, that? we have one more story on tonight's installment of Roll the News. Hold on one moment, Noah. He okay. would like to know this is Noah's. He wanted to know what that was, what we had here. It's true. Today we're smoking really on some good. old pals. No, uh, it, it, oh, there you go. Your childproof packaging. Um, you know, this is the cost-effective uh, cost effective cannabis that you find across the state of California right now. Oh. No Ruben, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I'm you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a paid not a paid endorsement, guys. So you know, <laughs> full disclosure. Uh, we have one more story on Roll the News tonight. A uh, Joker uh, is a new movie coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, they've just announced it will not play at the Aurora Theater in Colorado, where the site of the 2012 mass shooting occurred uh, during a Batman screening. So this movie is already uh, causing some controversy. It doesn't come out till October 4th, but people are saying that. It too closely mirrors a lot of the kind of mass shootings that we've been witnessing here in the United States over the last couple of decades. Um, what do you think about the Joker movie? Too controversial? Yeah. A little bit? You have, I mean, your kids are still fairly young, is that right? 22 and 20. All right, so they've gotten out of the high school realm, but mm -hmm. there must have still been some concern when they were in high school because that's something that happens now. That's For something sure. that yeah, yeah. I feel like when I was growing up or when you were growing up, we never—I never thought that would be something that would potentially happen. But no, we were. Uh, there was like shootings, but not like that. No, mm -hmm. there was no mass shootings where people were just coming out killing any randomly. Yeah. Right, they were targeted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was. Uh, it was about something different. Way different. Yes. Um, the movie does still seem kind of lit. Did you guys watch it? You didn't happen to watch the trailer, did I you? I watched the trailer, and see, it's causing a different type of controversy, I guess, in my circles, because it's he was a comedian. So you have uh, a lot of comics now that are like, okay, here go the weirdos that are about to hit the stage, and blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of just little banter back and forth in comedy forums right now based on that um, kind of the the weird side of comedy, the, the dark open mic. You know, I'm not really a comedian, but I hate my boss, so let me just get on this stage and say the N word and pussy a lot. So there's, we're, we're, uh, you're already seeing that since the trailer dropped. I really? saw, I saw so, a man so at a open mic night in full Joker outfit, the, uh, and this was in, before October, because it's still that. The door, the door is open. That's the what door you're is open. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you think you could play the Joker? Do I think I could put? I could play anything. <laughs> <laughs> Holler at Kalia. She is ready. Yeah, I could definitely. Do Maybe it. a Joker remake. Yeah. You know, we'll see how this one goes. I mean, Hollywood. Hollywood is on our side right now, and that's like as much as the the backlash would make them do it even more because it's going to sell tickets. It's true. Like people were mad about the Little Mermaid. And I got, got my advance tickets. You got to get ride the wave of controversy. You know. See what's going on. Kalia for the Joker. Can we make that a hashtag? <laughs> That's my Joker. That's face. convincing. You got a good Joker face. That that's uh, you know some people have a poker face. Well, you have I a Joker face. Wow. All right, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, you know people are protesting. Uh, parents of the victims of the shooting uh, are also Thank sending you. letters. Um, it's entertainment, but we are in a time where things are really wild, and uh, who knows what would cause people to do crazy things? I suppose. Mass shootings. Joker. Batman. Try to keep it chill. 
you know? It's just a movie, guys. It is, yeah. but is it? Uh-oh. What do you think? Is it? I don't think anything is just anything anymore. Everything is made with intent. Everything is made with it, everything is made with intent. Okay. You know? Um, so no, I don't think it's just a movie. It's more than just a movie. Oh yeah. What about Little Mermaid? Is Little Mermaid just a movie? Absolutely not. You think it's not bitches uh right now swimming around trying to get on land? Water under underwater mermaid bitches? Yeah. They're definitely out there, Kalia. Yeah. I mean, wow. Little Mermaid didn't come from nowhere, right? <laughs> Absolutely I mean, not. That's basically our planet and Little Mermaid are all, this everything is I know about stuff, science. stuff, people. There are robot dogs. You gonna tell me you don't believe that this bitch under the water right now trying to get to Prince Eric? You're crazy. I mean, we haven't, we haven't, re we haven't searched through the deepest parts of the ocean. There could be an entire Every shark of... week, we see something new. Yes? Every shark week. They do seem to Wait surprise Wait till the us. next shark week. If you see kind of a bitch do like this here, like, what was that? Was it a diver? No. That was a little mermaid mermaid. We got Bowie the cat checking in. Well then. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he, <laughs> he likes I'm to good. he like here he get, he can come up here. We can get him to maybe come here. What do you what do you think, Bowie? You gonna you gonna go for it, buddy? Oh, it's this side. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna go for it. Is he gonna go for it? Uh can we There we go, we got him to go for it. You know, he's a chiller. <laughs> Bowie the cat. He's a friend. He's a he's critter. A of, he's a critter of the critter. Like Mary Jane, uh, just wanted to check in with you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is About That Time. I'm your host, Noah Rubin. We've been chilling with Weldon Angeles, talking about the Mission Green movement, what you can do out there uh, to help with criminal justice reform, uh, get folks who are serving crazy-ass sentences for cannabis uh, out uh, and into reality and be maybe becoming part of the legal cannabis world. Uh, we're going to do another shout-out to our sponsors. Uh, G Pen, uh, Granko Science, uh, Loon, Pre Rolls, uh, and Vaporizers. Um, and that leads us to our uh, last segment of the night, Weldon. We do a segment we call the Astrology Time. Uh, we checked in with you, we checked in with the news. Uh, we like to check in with the stars as well. We do a section called Astrology Time. We break out our salt crystal lamp, uh, we <laughs> change the color of our show, we go into another dimension. Now, Weldon, did you, do you ever follow your horoscope? Do you follow the astrology? Uh, I don't. Can't say that I do. Anyone in the family? My like, son does. My son's huge on it. Really, your yeah. son's into the. So he kind of takes it serious. Son. And does mm -hmm. he? Does he try to drop knowledge on you a little? Like, oh, uh, dad. He it. has. I mean, you know, he has his crystals, and <laughs> yeah, he gets into it. I'm mm -hmm. into that. Okay. Yeah. So, would you say in general you're open to the ideas? You generally think they're kind of like whatever. What's what's your vibe on it? That thing or entertainment. <laughs> entertainment. Entertainment. Well, what we did, what we do on Astrology Time is we took your birth chart. We took your horoscope. Okay. You tell us if you think it's on point or not. You know, right, it, it, can it, say, it can say outlandish okay. things sometimes, but this is all actually from your horoscope. Okay. Um, let's check it out. They use the power of their positive attitude to get them through tough times. Now, that one se seemed like it was, you know, your guy who knows what tough times are about. Yeah, that's pretty on point. Yeah, hard to argue with that one, I think. Yeah. Um, can you think of a time like, yeah, I mean, we talked a little bit earlier about you being when you were incarcerated, uh, you know, that's not always easy to stay positive in there. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to manufacture hope just to trick yourself to, you know, stay sane. So you'll, you know, think of things to look forward to and what to be happy about, you know, um, it's just part of it. Wow. Yeah. To stay sane. It's like a, uh, uh, what a defense mechanism, our brain, like it's denial basically. Yeah. So yeah. Stay positive. Try to mm -hmm. stay healthy, you know, believe that good things are coming. Yeah. Um, we have another element from your horoscope. Uh, it says, sometimes they suffer from ailments that are created by past life traumas. I think that's implying that you've been reincarnated and potentially in your previous manifestation, you had trauma that you suffer from now. Yeah, my dad swears I was reincarnated. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Tell us more about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. my dad was huge on that. He's no longer here, but he had my hair cut off and sent somewhere. And I guess I was some sailor from Portugal. <laughs> wow. What does it feel like to be a reincarnated yeah. Portuguese sailor? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what made your dad think that you were reincarnated? That's pretty he, specific. He, yeah, he had he went and had all our past lives read, and we like <coughs> sent a whole report. This is, it was very detailed. <laughs> wow. And he was always into that. My dad was super into it. Interesting. Awesome. Interesting. With all your with all your siblings as well. Um. Yeah. Interesting. Portuguese sailor. Do you remember reading that description? Yeah. And what, did it resonate with you at all? 
I mean, I, when I was young, so I thought it was cool. I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, it's cool. I'm a like, I, was, I would have rather been like, you know, a king or something, you know, or a prince or, you know, but sailor's all right. Sailor's all right. Sailor's kind of cool. You got, at least you're upwardly mobile, you know. <laughs> we got another element from your horoscope. Uh, they're often drawn to careers that allow themselves to express creatively. You're a creative guy. That sounds like it's a pretty solid one, huh? Yeah. Did you feel called to music from a young age? Yeah, for sure. And what do you, do you remember? What was what was your first instrument? Did you play uh, an instrument? the keyboard? Yeah, piano. Okay. I mean, my, yeah, my uncle taught me how to play the piano. Like mm-hmm. he was so talented, he could play anything. He just hear it and he could play it immediately. Incredible. It could be a rap beat, it could be anything, and he can play the piano too. It was interesting. Yeah, so he started teaching me how to play. My first song I learned was Richard Marks' "I'll Be Waiting" or what was it called? Right, right here waiting. waiting. Yeah. yeah. First one I learned how to play. I so. remember that from a fifth yeah. grade dance myself. So that's a did you dance? Hour. Were you wallflower? Right? Uh, it was. It was no. It was the first dance. Like it was fifth grade, and that you remember like the first dance where like you actually slow dance with the other like gender and you're like uh i guess we're doing this that was the, that was it richard marks right here waiting that was the song See, i have two i love the piano though the piano and that's dope oh, very, that's actually very melodic the, yeah really, like, the piano is dope so i'm like i want to learn how to play that yeah and he didn't even know he didn't read music or anything he just said let me hear it and he just started figuring it out like incredible quick incredible and i'm like Gift. oh i want to i want to be like that yeah mm-hmm. That's so. worth aspiring to. Now, when you kind of picked up keyboards or whatever, when did you first start getting into like making beats and hip hop and stuff like that? Mm, probably '94. We actually, rec- I actually did a show. So we wrote a song. We made like a cheesy beat to it, and we rapped it um, my junior high school. So it was pretty cool. And then in '95, we went and recorded a song at like a professional studio, mm-hmm. but we're like. We didn't like the way it turned out. So we're like, it's time to go to L.A. So, <laughs> And at that time, I was traveling to L.A. back and forth. So that's when we went out to the studios out there. And that's when I started bumping into people and things took off. Yeah, things happened. Yeah. Um, do you ever make tunes now? Or are you kind of no, like... No, I don't... Mm-mm. No? The, the... I don't even listen to music that much anymore. So. Right. Well, you've got a mission now. Right. It's true. It's mm-hmm. true. you got to stay focused. Um Here's another question from your horoscope. Let us know if you think this is on point or not. Has the ability to reach the highest levels of spirituality. Do you find yourself to be a spiritual guy? Um, I can be. I mean, I was once. I know when I was in prison, I was probably at my spiritual height. (laughs) Kind of necessary, right? Yeah. um, What did you find most spiritually soothing uh, in that context? Um, I think making Salah. Um... You know, basically praying in a group um, with with the brothers, like it just, you know, I think that was it. Um, and that, you know, I, I think w- with without that, I probably wouldn't have survived prison because I, I don't know, I probably might have lost lost it. A lot of people would lose it in there. And they just, mm-hmm. especially when you got a lot of time, because my my had a life sentence. I wasn't gonna live if I I would never have finished that sentence. Eighty years old without health care in there, you never would have survived. Mm. Yeah, well, sometimes you gotta get spiritual. Mm-hmm. get through it um, we have one more from your horoscope um, material goals are less important than connection on an emotional level well material goals are less important than emotion yeah I feel like it's important to keep the uh, keep the message about spirit emotion connection those kind of things the dollar do- dollars won't be there when you're dead no they won't no but the level the, the level survive yep. but potentially be reincarnated like as a Portuguese sailor know, or something well, like that. Yeah, now yeah. I want to be, I don't know. <laughs> Great theologian Drake said that he was putting his money in the grave, so I, I have to <laughs> argue that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's quite a quite a hook. I mean, the guy's getting buried with those dollars, you know. It's a little bit dark. I mean, you know, maybe you should just give those dollars to people who really need them. That yeah. part. Instead of I burying yourself You dollars. live on, like, through your deeds. You know, all your yes. deeds you do, that's how you, you live on through your deeds. You know, like people do charity, they set up stuff that lives on and it helps other people and it continues. But money, I don't know. I mean, what is it? Really? What is it? You need some amount of money to, you know, in order to do the good. So, yeah, I mean, you have to have some kind of, you know, materialism. Right. But it it doesn't have to be excessive. No, not excessive. It shouldn't be the priority, most likely. Definitely not. Yeah. Keep it chill, guys. Uh, Well, that was astrology time. We could, you know, take our salt crystal lamp, throw it back there. You know, we went into another dimension. We checked it out. Or bad. I think the horoscope was pretty, you know, it was not it, it, not inaccurate. No, it wasn't inaccurate. Yeah, it was that, vague, but it was 
cool. It, it was vague but cool. You know, that's, yeah. the horoscope is well well known for that. Yeah. But I do think that was good that it called the uh, Portuguese sailor out. I don't, I don't think <laughs> we. Had, I don't think. Have you, you told that story know. before? No. no. <laughs> Guys, we have revealed for the first time ever that Weldon Angelus is actually a reincarnated <laughs> Portuguese soldier. And that that is a headline. Guys. We know how to make headlines here at about that time. Um, Cool. Well, uh, well, then we like to make sure before we wrap up the show that we give you a chance to let the audience out there know what they should be checking for, how they can find you, and how they can become part of this movement. Um, they should go to the weldonproject.org and and follow us on Instagram, Project Mission Green on Instagram, or me at Weldon Angelos, um, and just stay tuned. We got a lot of special things ahead. Guys, many special things ahead, important messages being shared. Uh, this is about that time, guys. I'm Noah Rubin. Uh, we really appreciate you guys checking in today. Uh, Kalia M McNeil, the co-host co with the most. Uh, shout out to G-Pen, our sponsors. Shout out to Loon, pre-rolls, and vaporizers. Guys, it's been about that time. Come with us very soon because it's going to be lit.